Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for uh, receiving us here. Well, thanks and, for uh, joining yeah, us. Thanks. Uh, we've been actually watching the development of the uh, game, and so far we loved what we uh, saw. But my question would go basically back in uh, the days in Los Angeles where you basically started your new studio over there. Yeah. And in that event, you revealed an involvement uh, between you and GOG Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, I would like to know what is the amount of the involvement and how do you see DRM uh, free is basically taking over? Well, um, GOG is a, a daughter company of uh, CD Projekt SA, so they're like, we're in the same office, they're colleagues. Um, they got their separate entrance because, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're working with them on a daily basis. We just merged the um, CD Projekt forum and uh, GOG accounts into one. Um, we just launched GOG in a few um, other countries. We're slowly like working on the localization. And um, for DRM, um, we always said um, we want to offer DRM-free versions of our games because the thing is, they get pirated anyway. True. You know, every game that's out there, you can get a that's pirated right. copy. Yes. Sometimes you get it earlier, sometimes you get it a bit later. Sometimes the copy has bad quality because the like the piracy DRM protection has been removed and it kind of breaks the game. So what happens is someone does not play for you, uh, pay for your game. And he doesn't have a great experience because that anti-DRM no this yes. crack doesn't work. So we just want to make sure that there's an easy way for gamers to play our game, and we think that pays off. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think this is really extremely clever actually to do this. You will be ahead of whatever is in the uh, market in terms of you know getting things in the yeah. market and stuff like that. All right. Um, my second question would be uh, about the heritage in The Witcher in general. Now, we all know that you based The Witcher on the heritage and the legacy of the myths, basically, based on the novel, which is The Witcher. Now, do you think uh, the studio will go ahead and find another heritage in somewhere in the, uh, in the world, or they will adapt another uh, myth from also another uh, heritage from any country. Well, um, we got these. We got these options. Um, they, there's new stuff coming out in terms of novels, obviously, where you could continue if you wanted to. Um, but um, the focus is Witcher three. We always said that the Witcher uh, will end. Is that third one? And um, if you play it, you'll, you'll understand. I think it makes sense also in terms of how the climax of the right. game. Um, evolves, but um, it's nothing that like we're thinking about right now. You've got to um, remember that we still have a game coming up called Cyberpunk, which will be a huge project. So um, once we're done with um, The Witcher, you'll hear about new stuff from CD Projekt. But um, first, um, it's all about this dude and Witcher 3, and uh, right. we're super happy to, to finally be getting closer to, uh, to release it. All right, very good. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, we also again know that The Witcher is an adaptation of uh, the novel. Yeah. Now, what was the amount of adaptation? I mean, how much you guys took from the novel or the story to make it a game? In other words, do you consider, for example, a good storytelling is a key factor to have a good uh, game, for example? Yeah, uh, it's the most important one. Um, to uh, come back of the, to the first part of your question, um, I wouldn't be able to tell you that percentage-wise. Um, also, you've got to make sure that you don't adapt like the book one by one, because you want to make sure that people who are not into the book would still understand it. Same thing goes for Witcher 3. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to make sure someone who picks it up for the first time has to be able to play it without having read it. So oh, right. things if you have read them, you have these special moments. That's your reward. Right? Of course. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's a nice, you know. True. And um, but uh, the second part of your question, that's um, that's a really cool thing actually to ask because a lot of people, when it comes to Witcher, they speak about the graphics and the stuff we're doing and the open world and how life everything looks. But the main effort and where our studio grew the most was uh, writers level designers, quest designers, people who create all these um, things to make sure that um, it's not just fetch quests. 
get get to place B, yeah, do find the a, go on the sword, again, kill yeah. the monster, True. come back, uh, and it gets kind of boring after two hours. Um, so we've got a lot of lot of really good riders, and um, that's um, so story for us um, is the most important thing when developing a game. If it looks good too. Great. Yeah, well, that's, I don't that's say an no. Yeah, it definitely yeah, helps. True, true. But if I could pick between graphics and um, story, um, I'd rather have the, the story. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I played the game uh, today, yeah. and, and even before that, a little bit of it. But I found that you guys don't really stress on the narration of the uh, game. Like, for example, you can have a scene, but you don't have uh, somebody narrates whatever is that scene for. Yeah. Now, the, 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 let's say the disappearance of this element, is it a game related that you guys have really good writers yeah. to, to place in a proper and solid story? Absolutely. Um, if I would write a story, it would always be like a very obvious consequence. Shoot this guy and he won't help you later on. Yeah, okay. All right. But um, what we're going to do and what our writers are going to do um, they won't give you those very obvious hints. They're not like this, hey, if you punch this guy in the face, he won't help you an hour later. Yeah, that's obvious. Um, we want to have um, people actually rethinking their decisions, playing the game, and then hours later, they realize, wait, what I've done hours ago in that one quest, maybe I should have made another choice. Maybe something else would have happened, and um, there are lots of lots of options where your decisions have a massive impact on the story, but you don't know beforehand what kind of impact it will be. You'll be you'll be surprised, and as a nice side effect, it obviously gives you a great replay value because if you play it a second time, you can say, well, this time in this specific quest, um, I'll make a different choice, and it's not that what happens a lot that you make that choice and there's a few different answers, but it's always the same ending. You know, you just go different. Yeah. No, it, there, there'll, be, uh, there'll be lots of consequences and things you can't undo. All right. Yeah. Um, now, Witcher 3 is next-gen game. Yeah. All right. And we've seen it on Xbox, PS4, and PC. Yeah. But the thing is, why there is a variation in terms of resolution? Now, we know that the highest would go for the PC, and then we have the PS4, which will do uh, 1080. Yeah. And then the lowest is Xbox. Yeah. I mean, is there any technical difficulties or challenges for such decision? Well, um, of course, there, there is always a limit. Um, like in, in in terms of PC, um, at some point, um, you just nobody has a PC that plays a certain game anymore. You could still push and push and push, but then nobody can afford that machine. Um, but yeah, you're right, if you have a high-spec PC, you can run it in 4K. That's true. Um, it, it's an it's a expensive PC too, but um, now the options are, if you have one platform that's not as powerful as um, the other, and um, usually you shouldn't compare a PS4 to a PC, but people do it, obviously, and it's their right to do it. Mm-hmm. And um, it would be weird if we remove 4K from the PC version because um, Xbox One and PS4 can't do 4K. If you've got that machine, you can run it in 4K, really cool for you. It looks great if you have 4K monitor and stuff. So um, we're pushing on all platforms as good as it gets. And if one platform has a higher resolution than the other one, it's just the way it is. We could also go ahead and say, well, we're locking everything at uh, 900, 720, whatnot, um, just for giving everyone the same thing. But um, we don't think that's the right approach. Just try to like make use of all the performance and all the special features. We have NVIDIA Hairworks on uh, PC, which does a really nice effect on fur, on fur, on, on hair. Um, we could easily put that out, and then um, because consoles won't have that. But why do that? It would upset PC players. And I think um, that whole discussion, and that's an interesting point about graphics and resolution. Um, Yeah, there's a difference. I can see that difference. I'm not saying, but um, I think what's more essential and people sometimes forget, it's like the actual art style and the graphics and the colors you pick and the mood 
and how the sunlight affects the colors. Exactly, and I was about the, to, to ask you about and, this. Um, um, the, the evolvement of the character itself in terms of physical... Uh, yeah, and um, uh, I've played it on all three platforms and um, the that whole look and um, how they, um, because you've got different environments like Skellige that's snow covered, kind of cold, gray, white island, and then you've got that that brown, gray, no man's land, or you've got all these flower fields around Novigrad, and I think that's the cool thing, to capture these different art styles and these different environments, and um, that works on all platforms and all resolutions. It oh, wouldn't work on the last gen. That's why we never... Yeah, of course. Yeah, yes, because that sure. version would be so different and it wouldn't be able to capture that art style. And sure. That's why you yes, don't have right. that. Yeah. All right, so my last question now is how do you think The Witcher 3 will stand out uh, for, I mean, apart from so far, the same games of the same style that went out so far? Um, story and art direction. Um, you'll be uh, playing the game soon and um, I'd say um, if you play it, remember the Baron quest that I now recommend to yeah. you and that is so well written as an example and I'm not going to spoil anything. Right. Um, just play it and um, it's an emotional roller coaster. And it's not a cheesy one, it's not like, ha ha ha, the good guy is bad, what a surprise, what a twist. Yeah, right. um, it's a lot of layers and um, we've got many of those quests. And um, we've not, we've actually, over all these years, we've not shown much of the game. There's True. so right. much more in there and um, we're, we're really excited. I know it sounds like one of these PR and we're so excited when people can finally no, we are, because they've been waiting so long and we want to see their reactions, which is something, um, if you do a shooter, you see people playing them, having a good time, but it's not so much about reactions, but we want to see what gamers think about our characters, how the characters evolve, As the whole story is the, is the wild hunt and what's, what's happening and um, the finale and everything, um, it, it'll be great for the team. Um, to, to see and read about the, the emotions and, and, and read all the comments and we, right. uh, we can't wait. Yeah. All right, very good. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Well, really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. And all the best great. for Thanks Witcher for 3 by. and CD Projekt. Yeah. And we're looking forward for the new titles that you guys are going to have. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot.